So it's a little it's a little noisy here in Brooklyn today, and I apologize in advance for that. But but speaking of noise, my name is Steve Guttenberg, and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today, well, today it's all about SVS. They make subwoofers, right? Yeah, well, of course they do. They're known for their subwoofers. And I reviewed one of their new little baby subs, the 3000 Micro, just a couple of weeks ago, and I loved it. And to, to, when I got that in, I also requested one of their stand mount speakers, the Prime Bookshelf, which now I'm giving it its own proper review. So I will link back to the subwoofer review. But today, today the Prime Bookshelf is the star. And well, first of all, I have to say this, <laughs> get this out of the way right up front. It's really beautiful. I mean, the finish, the cabinet work and the black gloss finish is truly stunning. I mean, compared to equivalently priced Elax and Polks and Boston and Q Acoustics clipped, they don't look as nice as this. I mean, it just is really, I mean, this looks like a speaker that costs double the price just in terms of its appearance and finish. So anyway, I got to get that out of the way up front because when I do reviews, it's really about sound quality, but I just had to give that extra special mention. Now the price, by the way, is $500 in the plain vanilla black ash finish and $600 a pair in this black gloss. Now it's also available in white gloss. So it's a typical stand mount speaker. It's a two-way. It's got a one-inch dome tweeter, six and a half inch polypropylene woofer, port in the back, nice binding post. Uh, it's kind of like the regular course as these things go. The sound, well, the sound is special in that it's very clear. It's an unusually clear, immediate, vivid sounding speaker. And I mean, th those are all compliments, by the way. It's a very, it's not a shy and retiring, boring speaker. That is an absolute. Uh, I don't feel it needs to be partnered with a sub, even though it's made by a subwoofer manufacturer. But yes, I imagine that many customers of the Prime Bookshelf do use it with subwoofers because it's made by a subwoofer company. Now I reviewed, because th this speaker has been around for a while. It's not a new design. A matter of fact, I reviewed its bigger brother, the Prime Tower for CNET in 2014. I just checked the date. Yeah, it was 2014. So it's seven years ago. <laughs> it's a while. And uh, I think this speaker came out at the same time as the tower. So uh, it's not a new thing, but you know what? It doesn't feel dated. It doesn't feel old. Um, it feels like, well, the kind of speaker SVS would make. Coming up in this review, I'm going to compare the Prime to the Polk Reserve R200 stand mount I just reviewed, and also the ever popular and oft mentioned in these reviews, Klipsch RP600M. So the RP600M is a bit bigger, but it also has a six inch woofer. So does the Polk. So uh, they're, they're all close enough in price that it's a fair comparison. So sometimes it comes up a lot these days that people I say, well, Steve, uh, so you seem to like the Prime Bookshelf, but how does it compare against the Kef LS50 Meta? These, can, these questions confuse me a little bit because that's a $1,500 pair speaker. This is a five or $600 pair speaker. Well, I'll just cut to the chase. If you're thinking about asking me that question, I'll tell you right up front, the LS50 Meta is a much better sounding speaker in every possible way. It's also three times the price, <laughs> three times the price of the black ash version of this speaker. So yeah, if you got 1500 bucks to spend on a, on a stand mount speaker, yeah, get that one. I mean, there are others you should be considering, but compared to this one, yes, the LS50 Meta is a much better sounding speaker. So I'm glad we got that out of the way real early in the review, because I know that some of you are thinking that, right? But seriously, this speaker just has a spark to it, a life to it that is really, really appealing. Uh, you hear detail, you hear clarity, it's fun to listen to, it boogies, it has a lot going for it. The music I started with for this review was Kraftwerk and their very first album looks a hell of a lot like this. Now, as far as I can tell, you can't stream this, at least not on Spotify or Tidal. That's one of the reasons I own CDs is not everything I want to play is streaming. Anyway, this one is so cool because it's they're not fully formed yet. This is from 1970. 
and it's it's more ambient it's more textural it's got things going on in the mix it's very electronic and just sounds weird things going on really really cool and this speaker really excels the prime does in, in delving deep into those kinds of sounds really nice and that led to this one uh, trans europe express and again um, texture pulse drive rhythm really really good so I was, I was feeling it with this speaker, and that's really important for me, is to have a sort of physical connection in terms of how I'm moving as I'm playing the music. So to start some comparisons, that's when I, I brought out the Polk Reserve R200 speakers. So they're actually a little bigger, they're deeper. From the front they look about the same, but it's a, a couple of inches deeper. And no surprise then, it has more bass Oomph. It certainly did on this one. Uh, remember this one? <laughs> Early, uh, I guess this is acid jazz. Talk about pulse and rhythm. Yeah, I would say that the Reserve 200 had more, more bounce to it, more drive than this one, than the Prime. Wow, it's not really jazz, by the way. Don't get nervous. It's just cut, it's groove, it's, it's trance music in a way, but it's jazzy trance music. I was grooving a little bit more with the Polk then, with the Prime, with us three. This is a great record. If you've never heard this record and you're, I wouldn't call it adventurous to listen to a record that's probably 20 years old, but if you're curious, and I sh you should be, because this is, some, I don't like too many of their later records, but this one, which I think is their first, is definitely worth a listen. If you're in the mood, you're in the right frame of mind for this, you gotta listen. So then I changed gears and popped on this guy. This is Kronos Quartet, early music. That's not early for them music, it's well into their career. This was recorded it between 1993 and 1997. And it was recorded at Skywalker Studios, which came as a big shock to me because it sounds like you're in a real space, like a church or a concert hall. And I'm reading the liner and I was like, wow. So in other words, they were using some really sophisticated reverb because it sounds like they're really in a beautiful acoustic space. Studios tend to be dry and dead and they add reverb in post-production. But whatever the case, it's a stunning recording. And just the tone of the, of the quartet was so beautiful and so, so there. And going back to the Polk R200, less so it was less tangible the music was less fully present over the r200 than it was on the prime so score another one for the prime and you know i do use rec some recordings repeatedly like some chesky's but i don't want to tell you every time i do it because it gets it would be kind of boring for you to hear me talk about the same music over and over again review after review after review so those are not part of my video shooting schedule. I just talked about new music, uh, different music, hopefully each time, just to keep you guys, eh, if you're not so into the gear, at least I'll turn you on to some music that you might like. Okay, so what's next? What's next, you ask? Okay, how about some Working Man's Dead? Now on this version, I was streaming it from Tidal, uh, it has some live tracks from 1971. And it's a great, great recording. And uh, the comparison here between the 600M and the Prime follows the usual course. The 600M presents a liver live sound, it is more spark to it, more jump. It sounds more like being at a concert. And the Prime is no slouch, but it just can't really keep up with the 600M in terms of that live factor whenever I got to come up with a better way of describing that but they're both good but the prime sounded smaller it, it just did and switching over because it is the uh, 600F is more sensitive higher efficiency design and it just opens up dynamically more so that's the way it rolls so to speak again prime wasn't an embarrassment it wasn't that far behind but it was definitely a thing that I had to point out. And then there's this Huntsville Bow. I, I, I don't really know <laughs> what the band is, but the music is good. It's deep, it's um, almost ambient, it's cinematic. 
it's it, there's no vocal or anything. It just kind of goes in different places. But the low end is a shudderingly deep, deep. There's a lot going on in the bottom end of this recording. And here, the uh, the prime pulled ahead of the RP600. It just goes deeper. It has better control. There's more uh, a tactile quality to the bass that the RP600 can't qu can't quite match. Um, but it's those little tinkly percussion sounds and scraping sounds, and I think electric guitars, uh, a lot going on. And uh, you could just hear more of that stuff coming out of the Prime. Not that the 600 was that far behind either. It wasn't. But uh, I like that low end ambience. I, I don't mean low end level in this, this time. I just mean the, this, this shudderingly deep stuff going on in the bottom end. Now, of course, <laughs> I have to add that uh, adding a subwoofer, in this case, an SVS uh, 3000 micro to either the Prime or the RP600M would probably be a good idea. If you're into music with lots of low, low end, uh, subwoofers are good, especially if you, can't, if you don't have room for a big speaker. Now, honestly, I, me, myself, and I, we don't really use subwoofers. I can't. In terms of doing reviews, it's too complex to be putting subwoofers in and out of systems. So if for no other reason, I don't actually live with subwoofers. But I will tell you this, that the quality of deep bass and not so deep bass coming out of a subwoofer is ahead of most speakers. Even fairly large speakers can't keep up with a really good sub. So if low bass is important to you, and you're going to consider buying a prime bookshelf speaker, you should probably get a subwoofer. I think that would be the fastest way around the track here. So if low bass is a thing, yeah, get a sub. So at this point, I just want to say, in closing, in my closing remarks, there is some pressure that reviewers feel to proclaim a thing, a, you know, a speaker, an amp, whatever, the best. And I do my best not to do that. Best is a complicated issue when it comes to audio. Actually, I think with most things that get reviews, movies, it's the best movie. Well, maybe the best movie, but you might not like it. <laughs> best has nothing to do with liking something, really. So um, what I'm trying to do in reviews is not say that something is the best. I'm trying to describe what it's doing, what it sounds like. That's what I'm trying to do. And if the things that it's doing well line up with what you want, in this case, out of a speaker, bingo, that's worth checking out on your end, right? But to say that something is the best, the best $500 speaker in this, no, that's, that's just not really, that's not doable, certainly by me. It's just not realistic because we each come to this with different expectations, with different rooms, with different partnering or electronics, with different acoustic issues in our rooms. Um, taste, of course, taste. Taste is always huge, you know, so it may check all the other boxes perfectly well, but if you don't like it, you don't like it. It's not that you're wrong and you have to learn how to like the thing that gets that someone said is the best. No, if you don't like it, you don't like it. So I just want to clear the air there about proclaiming the best. And I should do this more often in reviews because I do feel a pressure to, to say that, to say something is the best. You get it? I think so. I hope so. But I will say in, in my uh, further closing remarks, I think the, <laughs> the SVS Prime bookshelf is a sweet little speaker. And, uh, and now I can say, <laughs> my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Hit the button, yeah, right down there. When you do, hit the bell, hit that little freaking bell so that you'll be notified every time there's an amazing new episode of this thing. Oh, and then, of course, you should check out the Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. There is a link to that site directly below in the description of this video. And then I can say, well, check out the playlist. <laughs> You know, you know where I was going, right? Uh, check out the playlist. There's a playlist for many, many more speaker reviews, and I'll link to that playlist right there. Uh, what else? We got 
speaker reviews and headphone reviews and electronics reviews and even music reviews and that's pretty brave of me to say that but beyond that we got interviews with famous people and not so famous people and actually upcoming very very soon I'm going to be shooting a video I'm really looking forward to it face to face in Manhattan the guy's got a really beautiful apartment really he's got two systems I this is going to be the first time I've done that in a really long time go to a stranger's house to shoot a video so uh, I have very high expectations and with that I can say my work here is at last complete and I really really do hope to see you back here again so thanks <laughs>